Grass Garage, Terrell here. How can I help you? Yeah? Yeah, this is a lawnmower shop. Yeah, we, we'll haul away old lawnmowers. You got an old mower you want to give us? Okay, let me get your name and phone number and address, and we'll come out and... What's your name, sir? Address and your phone number. All right, we'll see you shortly. You have a good day. Bye. What was that all about? Some guy's got an old lawnmower. He wants to give us for parts. All we got to do is go and pick it up. Did you say what kind it was? No. I told him we take old tractors for parts. Probably an old craftsman or something. Oh, yeah. Well, you never know. I'm in a vintage tractor. Maybe it's something cool. Well, I don't know if it's a vintage tractor. It's probably just an old modern tractor. Oh, yeah. Well, anyway, if you don't mind, I'll ride with you. Check it out. Yeah, I may need some help loading it on the trailer. All right, cool. Yeah, I'm down. I got his name and number. Let's go get it. All right. is taking us on a goat path. Where the heck does this guy live? Um, do I turn here, Slippers? Uh, I don't I don't think I'd, I'd turn there. No, keep going straight? I keep going straight. That doesn't look like, look like anything. There's a road there. Yeah, an old road. Another goat path. I'm sure that GPS is right. So if we're going the right way, at least we're on an actual road. Yeah, a curvy road. Yeah, it's kind of fun. Like a little road coaster. Wow. These, these are all my uh, ones that I keep running and I have around here. There's several more at a friend's house. My wife would really like me to get rid of a couple of them. I believe she'd like me to get rid of all of them, but oh, yeah. I figure a couple will be a good start. And I just don't have time to give them the attention that they need to have. Are we getting any of these? No, there's possibly at some point, got some more that are back in here that you can't really see real well, but buried back there. There's one more oh, yellow man. one right there. And I like your gas can collection you got. Yeah, I started collecting those several years ago. I'd go around garage sales and stuff, and if I see one that had a, a name brand on it, like a Toro or the Home Light and the Lawn Boy, there's a Steel back there. There's McCulloch. McCulloch. Got all kinds of them. Those are the, the nice ones. A lot of them are just the uh, standard uh, Eagle gas can. Mm -hmm. But some of them really have neat things inside where they got a the oil measuring cup inside when you take the, the big cap off it's got a measuring cup built inside and there's a lot of a lot of cool ones up there. Yeah yeah I got I got an old lawn boy one. You got a real old lawn boy one back there I see. Yeah. Yeah there's some real old ones in there. Up on that cooler. Yeah that's yeah, awesome. those are nice. Yeah and it's uh John Deere. The one I have they'll find is one that says Bolin's. So I got Bolin's oh. and I collected Bolin's since I was Probably seven years old. My dad bought the first one and I collect them all my life. I've never seen a Bolin's can. I've seen them on pictures, 
and now you got one. I don't have one. I got oh, you don't I, have I don't, one. don't have a Bowlins gas can. So you're looking. So any of you grass rats out there got a Bowlins can? Let us know. We'll get it to Brian here. Yeah, I appreciate that. That another other, one other thing would be a, a real mower or a, a dethatcher they made for these. I've never been able to find a dethatcher attachment for these. All right. Get on it, grass rats. They're back here, around here, behind the, behind the carport. All right. Okay, come on in here, guys. They're back here in the shed I built. They're up here on something on the shelf here. Okay. So they're not real big, so we could just lift them up. I thought they were big old tractors that we we're gonna have to yeah. have well, ramps are, and stuff. These are the baby ones. They're uh, pretty light. We can lift them down, right? So yeah, for sure. Yeah, I lifted them up there probably ten years ago. Me and some friends. So I'm sure, I'm sure yeah, you guys can get them back, get it back down. Yep. All right, let me grab this deck. It shouldn't be that heavy. Oh, no, it's not that. No, no. I got it. I got it. Oh, uh, look at that. Three little blades. Look like new ones. I say they look new. Look like new blades. Yeah. Nice. Maybe I'm not sure what I'm getting rid of here. <laughs> well, now he's changing his mind. <laughs> I haven't looked at him for such a long time. I can't remember what's what anymore. And this is how you adjust it? Yeah, that's the deck height. Originally, there's a little decal on here with little marks on it that you uh, can adjust them to the same height. Looks like things are a little bit rusted up. Oh, we'll get it freed up. Sounds fresh. <laughs> that's how you know it's running. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Now, I don't know if we can get air. I got air pressure. We can try to put air in some of them tires. I don't know if they'll hold or not. Uh, it seems to roll without it. It rolls pretty easy. All right, slippers. You're going to have to give me a hand. I'm going to give you a hand there, Terrell. Yeah. Want me to get this generator out of the way? Yeah, that would help. Oh. This is better than generators like generators. That's a big little Jenny. there for you too. <laughs> you can always use a little raccoon food. <laughs> Got a Briggs on it. Nice. 28, so 28 inch cut. Yep. PTO on and off. That's the, and that lever there is high low range. So it's got a high and low transmission. How do you go in reverse? Here's your, your shifter here, forward and reverse. Oh, okay. And you got clutch and brake pedal. This one's the clutch. And this, this one is the brake. Nice. The, the brakes are just little shoes inside of the back side of the wheel hub that expand out, push inside of the wheel. Cool. That'll work real well sometimes. Oh yeah. It's pretty neat. Yeah. The clutch has got a little cable here that goes through and uh -huh. it's like a spring is shot or something here that come back up. But it just opens and moves the idler pulley on and off the pulley. This is neat. Uh-huh. I like it. I like it. Get it all painted. Now what was the original color? It was kind of a whitish beige color. So like an off-white? Yeah, if you, if you can see this okay. color this right here, that's the color it was. That's the exact same color as that in the, the red also. This uh this was the same white and beige, this front, I think the back. Or I red. Guess, well I guess it's all this back here is white, this here is red. Oh, we'll put it back to over it. Uh -huh. That's what I thought the thing about these, they come apart for a small enough where you probably put this in uh, your glass cabinet. Yep. Get it all cleaned up. We're getting a new glass cabinet at the shop, so it'll be big enough to. Oh yeah. Engine's free. 
the, it's, nice. been, it's been sitting up there probably for at least 10 years. And where did you get it? I bought it from somebody. I can't remember where it's been so long ago. You had so many? Yeah, I've, I've collected them for years. And so this blower shroud had been replaced. This isn't the original. Yeah, that may not be the original engine on so it. So now we can't see what year it is. Do you have any idea? Because that's the sticker they would give you with the new Yeah, this is uh, probably 64, 65, somewhere okay. in there. With, with this color scheme, that's, that's the... Uh, general uh, date of it in somewhere in that area all right now we but, just got to get it loaded on it well before before you do that I think his little brother's gonna be lonely in there you want to take two of them what you're giving us another one well I don't want to be up there lonely yeah why don't you take, take his brother also awesome so now make, we're getting two and that'll make my wife happy too <laughs> well let's yeah we'll make her even happier we'll take them all <laughs> I don't know about that I also got some paperwork on I'll have to find. I got some uh, owner's manuals and uh, parts parts breakdown. I wanted to see which they still have model numbers on them. The model numbers the model would be under there. Are on that tag oh, yeah. right there that's kind of worn off on them. Well, with the inner screen, you can find any information you want. Yeah. And our fans out there. Yeah, there's. A there lot of a, them would probably know. Yeah, there was a like model 913 through model 918. Um, the later ones are also painted the, the same yellow as the EK10 estate the estate keepers. So these both started about the same time. 63 is the, when they first started, and then they ended in 69. Well, thanks, right, well, Brian. Well, thanks, Carol. I'm glad you took them. Take care of my babies well, we, for me. We, we probably got. Raccoon poop on our hands. Uh, well, that's, yeah, a, that's that's free of charge. You don't don't need to worry about that. <laughs> so, are you sure we don't owe you anything for these? Well, I don't know. Maybe give me a T-shirt or something. Hey, you got it. Slippers. Take off your shirt. Oh, that's nasty. I want his little shirt. Well, here, how about mine? Yours isn't very big either. Probably nasty also. You ain't got a new one with you? We got any shirts? Uh, I think we got some in the truck. We'll get them. Okay. Get the man something. For giving us these antique. Where are you going? Oh, look at this. Right here. There you go. Here, we got you something. A nice little care package. Nice. Don't here. drop it. There's a coffee mug. Coffee mug. Keychain. Some stickers. stickers. You can put one of them on yeah, your bowl ones. Put one of those on the back of my bowl ones. And there's a couple of tarot shirts. A couple of tarot shirts. Great. The one to me and my wife can have one. There you go. So, so she'll be so happy that yeah, we took two. That's a pocket two. tee. Cool. Well, I really appreciate it. Well, we appreciate you yeah, giving us these two vintage lawn keys. Better into the deal. <laughs> <laughs> Take care of them. I hope you get them running and. Uh, I'm sure I'll see updates on the on the channel. On the You'll channel. see us getting it running. We're gonna take one of them back and at least maybe try to get one of them started when we get back to the shop. Yeah, I'm sure you can do it. All right, Brian. Thanks again. Thanks, Carol. Yeah, thank you. Good for sure. Enjoy the rest of your day. You too. Try to keep cool. Oh yeah, we're gonna have that air cranked. <laughs> Careful going home. Don't lose them. All right. Well, we got them back at the shop and we aired up the tires and so far they're holding air. So next thing we're going to do is give them a pressure scrubbing. And then we're going to evaluate them and see which one would be easier to get going first. So let's give them a scrubbing. <laughs> Now we're going to let them dry 
and then we'll evaluate them. That'll be the next step. We'll check for spark, compression, fuel, and then out of the two, we'll see which one might be the easier one to, to start with to get it running. And then we'll go from there. Well, last night I went on the inner screen and did a little research on these two lawn keepers because I don't know a lot about them. And from the research I've done, this one here is the older of the two. This, I believe, is a 910. And it was made between 63, 1963 and 1965. And part of the reason I know that is because of the way the seat is. There's a backrest that's missing off of here. There was a metal piece of metal, like a three inch strip of metal that came up and then it had a, a back plate on it up here. That's gone, that's missing. And it's got the brakes and scrap of engine on it. And as we discussed at Brian's house, this isn't the original blower shroud. So something happened where they broke the recoil or something and they had to go get a new shroud. Because the original one would have had B and S and those little ribs stamped into the cover. And also, from the pictures I've seen of these, I don't think this is the original air filter cover either. But out of the two that I looked at, you know, these two, this would be the one that we're going to concentrate on getting running. Because this one's in better shape. The clutch and the brakes and everything all work on this one. Where the other one behind the cameraman has got some issues that would take a lot longer for us to sort out to get it to work right. One of them being the tires keep going flat all the time and some other stuff, which we'll go over. So now this one is a 911, I believe. And it's got a six horse Tecumish on it. Where the other one's got a six horse Briggs. I don't know if I mentioned the horsepower. They're both six horsepower engines. So this one, this 911, was made between 65 and 67. And like at Brian's house, I was talking about uh, electric start you could possibly put on there. And I, I found out that, yes, you could. You could put electric start, 110 volt electric start, which is like what they put on a snowblower. So you would plug it in the wall, hit a button, start the lawn keeper up in your garage, and then go cut grass. They figured, you know, you'd only need to start it the one time. Because there's no place for a battery... Or, you know, I, I could probably put a place for a battery because you need a battery and a solenoid and a start button, which would be no problem. But I do have some snowblower electric starters. I could possibly put electric start on that, but we'll see at a later date. But this one's got a lot of other issues. That's why I'm going to do this one first. We're going to try to get started. Oh, and another thing, the price of these things. They had the price on it. So this one, between 65 and 67, this 911, had a list price of $415. It's kind of pricey back then. And the 910 was a little cheaper, uh, $342 was that one. So let's go over some of the stuff that's wrong with this one. And then we're going to raise it up in the air so you can get a look underneath to see how everything works. So one of the things, Mr. Cameraman, look right here. Get on that side. And right here in this part where it articulates, it's, it's pretty wore out. There's a lot of slop in there. Even though this is newer than the other one, this one definitely has got a lot more issues. And this PTO engagement lever here, this is supposed to be a push button. So you push this in, so you can put it in, engage, you know, engage it and disengage it. And that button is supposed to pop out and lock it in the gear and that's frozen. And this cable here, which controls the, controls the clutch, this cable is broken. So I'm going to go ahead and stand it up. 
Another thing, neither one of them has any spark, which is no problem. Probably just needs points and condenser. here on this one is isn't supposed to, it's supposed to move independently the clutch and the brake but it's moving together I think it's frozen and it looks like this this part here is all elongated like it was wore out it looks like somebody at some point put a, a bolt in there and double nutted it to lock it so this would have to be addressed Here's that cable, that clutch cable, and you can see it's broken. Again, no, no big deal. I could, I'm sure I could scrounge up another one from another manufacturer or possibly repair that one somehow. But it's got that going on. But it's a pretty simple machine if you look at it. These wheels are independent. They don't steer because it steers in the middle. And here's your engagement and everything down here this double pulley so when you engage the lever on the side would swing this to tighten this belt which and then the belt off of here goes to the mower deck which starts spinning the blades so right now it's in the off position you swing that lever tighten the belt and this pulley would start to spin and it would start to spin the mower blades and then down here this is your transmission pulley this big pulley here is on the trans, and then this is your engine pulley. So when you push in the clutch, this belt gets loose, you put it in gear, you let your foot off the pedal, the belt gets tight, and you start to move forward or reverse. And again, it's got a two-speed trans. They also said in low speed it was two miles an hour and in high speed was three miles an hour. Now you can change the speed by just changing the diameter of this pulley. You could probably make it go a lot faster if this was a smaller pulley on there. But again, it's all figured out to keep up with the, you know, the, the, the blade speed, the blade tip speed. So if you started messing around with the ground drive speed, you would also have to mess around with the speed of the blades. Because if you make the, the little mower go faster, then the blades could keep up with the grass. It's not going to cut very well. But we're going to leave it original on this one. We're going to concentrate on this one first. And who knows what we'll do with this one. All right, I'm gonna let it down, and then we'll get started. So when I was evaluating the two, you know, certain things I want to do, and that's check for spark for one and compression. And again, I could tell, I could tell they got compression just by pulling them. I don't need a compression tester. This hand is a compression tester. So I know if I got spark and I shot some dinosaur farts in there, it would lick off and run and die. Another thing I like to do, because this gas cap is all rusted and rotted, so I want to take a look in the gas tank because, you know, maybe the gas tank's all rotted out. But hey, Brian gave us some good candidates here because look, the tank has very minimal rust in there. So it's a it's a good good candidate to be cleaned out and sealed. I like to seal all my metal gas tanks. But we're going to concentrate on this one. So now we need to look inside the tank on this one. And this cap again is rusty. I got a new cap I can put on there. And look at this one. This one's even cleaner 
than this Cummins one. One thing I don't like is how this seat is so close to this gas tank. It must be difficult to, to fill this thing. You'd think they would move it forward. Now there is adjustments on this seat. It is all the way back. Another thing, it's kind of, it sits kind of low. So when you're sitting on it, you know, you sit kind of low. Plus the seat's still wet from us washing it yesterday. Now my butt's all wet. So one thing I'd like to do is maybe try to raise it up some. I think it would be a little more comfortable if it sat up a little higher. That's a couple inches there. That feels a lot better. Another thing I notice about a lot of this vintage lawn equipment, when you look at the old ads, and maybe you noticed this too, maybe you didn't. In all their brochures on a lot of this stuff, even some of the stuff we covered in the past, they always got women. They show the woman on there, a wife. Remember we did that one on that electric starter, that kit you added, there was a woman on the box. Uh, I also had an ad, I sent it to Musty. It was a Homco gas-powered real mower, and they had this, you know, very attractive woman using the mower. So I guess back in the day, you know, the wife, she stayed home, and she cooked, and she cleaned, and I guess she also took care of the yard while the old man was at work. And then when he came home, it was like, okay, honey, I'm home. What's for dinner? Where's my martini? Did you cut the grass today? I wonder what that slug did. All he did was work making a wife do all that stuff. So it seemed like they targeted women back then. So check out a lot of vintage ads for, for lawnmowers and you'll see they always got the wife on there. Because this is a tiny mower, you know. If you're a big six foot or over six foot guy, you probably look kinda, kinda silly sitting on it. All right, so as I said, no spark. So, I'm going to take the plug out. I already had it out. It doesn't look that bad. Old motorcraft plug. So I'm going to go ahead and pull the shroud. And we're going to, we're going to put a set of points in it and condenser. See if we can get spark out of this thing. Again, I'll try to locate a blower shroud that's got that. I'm pretty sure I could probably find one. Uncle Pat might have one. Oh, there's two bolts in the front. Again, this is a six horse. Let me get my little tray. I need a little tray to put the parts in. Got to disconnect this fuel line. Because the gas tank is part of the... The gas tank is part of the blower shroud. I guess it's half an inch. We'll see what we can scrounge up. First thing we want to do is get it running. Running and see if we can, if we can drive it. Yeah, see what I mean with this seat? There we got it off. So yeah, this is all, this is not removable. So I'm gonna have to find a, a blower shroud. The recoil is removable, I can take that off the blower shroud. I need the old vintage blower shroud that says BNS with the lines on it. If I don't find one, maybe I can have a graphic made that got that 3D look where it looks like it's stamped in there and just put a, a graphic on it. That'd be cool. Alright, so this engine is old. I'm sure it's the original one from the 60s. It's got that three-legged coil on there. So if we wanted to convert this to electronic ignition, 
we would have to change the flywheel and the coil. But I think if we just put points condenser in it, it'll probably run, you know, it's 60 years old. Points, points last quite a while. And especially a lot of this equipment that I, that I do these videos on, it's not like we're using it once a week. Most of it sits after I get done doing a video on it. It sits or it gets sold. Yeah, it's got the starter clutch that sticks through the end. You know, the new starter clutches got a little cap on the end. I remember in one of the videos I cut the end of the crankshaft off a little bit to accommodate the new one. As soon as you stick the new starter clutch on there, it pops that cap off the end. I never did give me the tray I said I was going to get. That's all right. Oh, here's one. Here's a little tray. Starter clutch tool, 19244 is the Briggs number. I'm sure you can find this on Scamazon, a knockoff one. It wasn't very tight. Key doesn't look like it's sheared. Let me see if I got a knockoff tool in this. Yeah, in this toolbox, and I do. It's a knockoff tool, flywheel knockoff tool. You know, you don't need a puller for all this stuff. You're gonna ruin it. You need a puller. No, you don't. Why did they make a knockoff tool if I need a puller? You can use either or, you're not gonna hurt anything. Put a little pressure on it. Give it a sharp blow right in the center. And now you just totally ruined that engine. Junk. Junk, junk, junk. Hitting the center with a hammer. Junk, junk, junk. Nikki Six in the scrap barrel. Junk, junk, junk. Hitting the crank with a hammer. Oh, I see this wasn't bolted on. A little screw's missing. Just ground up a screw when I go to reassemble. Oh, it's got those real old points. I hope I got a set of these. Let me take this off and let's get a look. Let's get a look see at the contacts. Come on. Come on, little points. Come off of that spring. Wow. They're almost like brand new. They're not really worn that bad. Huh. Probably just clean them. They're probably just dirty. And we'll make sure the gap is right and we'll check for spark. All right. Well, that's good. Get it locked in there. Come on. There we go. All right. Let me turn them over. Make sure they're going up and down. Maybe the plunger's stuck. Well, plunger's going up and down. Wire looks all right. Alright, let me just clean them real good with some brake 
cleaner or carbon spray and some paper. I won't need to apply them or sand them. All right, I sprayed some carb spray on the contacts. Now I got some paper in there. I got the got the points closed, so it's putting tension on the paper. Give it some good snaps on there. We'll put this back on, and then. Uh, We'll check it for spark. Put the flywheel on and give her a spin. See if we got sparkage. They were at 20. Got good air gap. Key wasn't sheared. There is no washer though. There's supposed to be a washer under there. A spring washer. Let me see if I can find one. Alright, I found a washer that'll work. Got spark now. Just needed a good cleaning. All right. So you can just rock it back and forth when you got points condenser ignition. If it was electronic ignition, you got to spin it a lot faster. So we would have had to put the recoil on there. Just so you know. But yeah, with points, you can just rock it back and forth on the magnets. And if it jumps that gap, you got good sparkage. So they just needed a good cleaning. Like I said, they look like new. So now let me find a screw. And with my tentacle octopus type fingers, unless the screw is snapped off in there. Put that cover back on. I don't feel the, the hole for it. I guess it would be around this area right here. I don't feel nothing. Or a screw would go in there. Unless it snapped off. Oh, here it is, way in the back. All right. Let me see if I can find a screw to fit in there. All right, before I put this cover on, I want to make sure this gas tank, this fuel line is going to let gas out. So I put a small amount of fuel in there. Oh yeah. Oh, that was a good flow too. I barely opened it. All right, that's good. <laughs> Wouldn't that be something if I put this on and open that gas valve? And this thing was stored properly and the carbon trailer was good. And I got that that cover on. I got that screw in there. I don't like this secret situation. There we go. You know, I got a lot of tabs in on that. Got that little tab on there. Get my light. And another thing, since I got it off, I'm going to spray some croil in there on that spring. 
kind of loosen up some of that old grease that's on there. If you know anything about these recoils, there's a little spring in there. So when I push on that, see, it makes it retract. Plus it's not centered either. I wonder if there's enough tension on this spring. Nope. I don't got a gas tank on it either. Pull it all the way out. Guess I put a little too much gas in it. Can we turn this some more? No. So the spring is, spring is where it should be. Alright. Let's put it back on. that washer I put on there is too thick. There it goes. I just didn't have it. Alright, I got it seated right now. Alright, I'm going to check the dinosaur syrup. Things that caps tight. Oh, got plenty in there. That don't look too bad. You can see through it. All right, so we got plenty of dinosaur syrup. Let's take this air cleaner off. Now I got the gas valve open, so there's gas going to the carburetor. I don't see it leaking out. Oh, look at that air filter. Again, I don't know if this is the correct one for it. It may or may not be. Maybe you grass rats out there might have be a lawn, a lawn keeper expert and might know. Let's see if we can see any gas down there in the throat of it. Nope. So I'm just going to try to start it. I'm going to put the choke on, put the throttle on fast, because the throttle actually still works. And let's see if it'll, if it'll lick off on its own.
why it's surging, because I didn't put a lot in there, like I said. But hey, huh, it ran. I didn't have to go through the carburetor at all. I shifted it from low to high. A little sketchy driving this thing. You know what it is. You know what this is? This is your first zero turn lawnmower, if you think about it. Because I was able to turn around right over there where all them trailers and stuff are, and it's pretty tight. The brakes kind of suck, but they just they just might have to be cleaned because we, just, we didn't show you that, I don't think, when we lifted it up. Maybe I can just lift it up by hand. It doesn't weigh that much. Let me lift it up. But here's the brakes. See the brakes? It's just a brake pad that rubs on the inside of the tire. See? And that's what stops you. Or tries to stop you. Maybe there's an adjustment on there because it was a little scary doing that. I didn't go over that. But yeah. Huh. We got it going with very little effort. For what it looks like, put a plug in it, clean the points. That starter clutch, I may have to replace that or at least take it apart and clean it. Throttle works. Next would be get a belt, put, put the deck on it. See how it cuts. Well, there's your dinner on this one, part one. Stay tuned for part two. Well, I'm gonna get the deck put on it. I gotta find a belt and uh, we'll do some other stuff. We'll go over the brakes and stuff in part two, try to get them to stop a little better. And then we'll see what we'll do from there. So subscribe to this YouTube channel, Tarot Fixes All. Check out our web store. We got all kinds of stuff there like this shirt. Knuckleheads operate power equipment and I'm one of them operating this. A little articulating mower. Check out our second channel, Terrell Fixes All Skits. That's a good channel if you're not familiar with it. Check that one out. And as always, there's your dinner. Woo! Got the little lock keeper going with very little effort. Didn't need much. Now we need tires and stuff. Maybe we'll do all that. We'll see. We'll work on it. We'll see. Lawn keeper. I'm keeping the lawn. Well, of course you're going to keep the lawn. It's a lawn keeper.